Hey there, space explorers. Ready to navigate the cosmic wonders of Startopia? In this video, I will go over all the things you need to know to go from a Startopia noob to a Startopia expert. So sit back, relax, and let's begin the video. There are four different types of starships, ranging from the worst being Imperial Starship to the best being Hypertech Starship. The only real difference between the starships is their fuel capacity. The worst one has a fuel capacity of 100 star fuel, and the best one has a fuel capacity of 500 star fuel. More about star fuel later. The way to get your own starship is to buy a starship blast from the shop or from another player. After buying the blast, you need to use it to create your own starship. At the time of making this video, the worst starship blast costs five world locks, and the best Starship Blast costs 15 World Locks. I would always recommend buying the best Starship Blast, since it's not very expensive, and is the best by far. There are five different sectors in Startopia starting from the Alpha Sector. After completing all five sectors, there's a final boss called Growlactus. There are also two more sectors after that, but those are not in the scope of this video. The sectors get harder the further you get down the list. Each sector has different missions. Each sector also has different rewards for completing the missions. To advance to the next sector, you need to complete enough missions in the previous sector and upgrade your starship, but more about that later. When you want to begin your first mission, you first need to buy star tools. There are 12 different tools, but you don't need to know what each of them does. I will explain why soon. You can buy the star tools directly from the shop through a galactic goodies pack, or you can buy them from other players. All other tools cost 10 to 11 per world lock at the time of making this video, but teleport charges and drones are more expensive. To begin your first mission, you need to walk over to this thing, wrench it, and select Begin a Star Voyage. To complete a mission, you need to look up a guide on the Grotopia wiki. Here's a link to that. Each mission always has the same solution every time, so you can easily use the Grotopia wiki page to cheat your way to victory every time. There are, however, two special cases where this cheat sheet doesn't work flawlessly and you need to adapt. The first case is skill fail and the second case is you get damaged too much. Let's first look at the case of skill fail. If you get a skill fail, the solution is to simply repeat the last tool you used again and then continue the pattern as normal. Now let's look at the case you get damaged too much. If you get damaged too much, you lose. If any of these three numbers during a mission reach 0%, you lose. To avoid this, if your ship health is getting too close to zero, use Galacti Bolt. If your reputation is getting too close to zero, use star supplies. And last, if your crew health is getting too close to zero, use space meds. Then continue the pattern as normal from where you left off. A couple more things about skill fails. The more missions you complete, the less skill fails you will get. That's because your Star Captain skill increases by one every time you complete a mission. You start at Star Captain skill level zero, and the skill level caps out at level 100. There are also machines and consumables to reduce the amount of skill fails you get, but more about those later. If you fail a mission, you lose star fuel from the ship. How much fuel you lose depends on the sector you are in. To see your ship's fuel status, you need to wrench the reactor. From there, you can manually add more star fuel. The fuel automatically replenishes over time. There are three types of machines you should always add to your starship to reduce the amount of skill fails you get. When a tactical console is placed, the user will experience less skill fails related to reputation. Similarly, when a science station is placed, the user will experience less skill fails related to the ship's health. Lastly, when a life support is placed, the user will experience less skill fails related to the crew's health. All three of these machines are very cheap, only two world locks each. One should always get them all because they help a ton for a small price. Sometimes entering the next sector requires you to upgrade your starship. To do that, just replace the existing machinery with better ones you bought or got from completing missions. The best upgrades are also not very expensive, only around 5 world locks each. The possible rewards you can get from completing a mission depend on the sector you are in. You can see all the possible rewards from each sector on the Grotopia wiki, there are a lot. There are also bonus rewards you can get if your Star Captain role level is high enough. You start getting Space Rocks at Star Captain role level 3, and you start getting Encapsulated Galaxies at Star Captain role level 7. Both items are in demand, so it is recommended to get to level 7, or at least to level 3, for bonus profit when doing Startopia. There are two types of buffs in Startopia. There are clothing items that give you a buff, and there are consumables that give you a buff. 
Let's look at the clothing items first. Some of the most commonly used clothing items in Startopia are items that give you extra XP. Chaos Dragon, Star Dragon Claw, and Ancestral Totem of Wisdom all give you bonus XP during Startopia. Wearing all three items makes Startopia a valid way of quickly leveling up. Now let's look at the consumables. You can only use one at a time. Skill Spice makes you have 50% less skill fails for half an hour. Geminade gives you 500 gems for every mission you complete for half an hour. Both are excellent options to use during Startopia. That was everything. Have fun traveling through the galaxies on your own terms. Enjoy.